Okay, I think we're going to make a start. I'd like to begin by welcoming you this morning to um, this webinar, which is going to tell you all about the Ecclesiastical Heritage Heroes Awards. And um, we will um, begin with a little bit of, of housekeeping. The first thing to say is that this session is being recorded. That's so that we can capture the value of the session and make it available for yourselves to watch afterwards, but also those that couldn't make the session this morning. The duration is uh, a little dependent on the number of questions and answers that, uh, or how long that part of the, the session takes. The formal presentation will be around 20 minutes and we'll move straight on to questions and answers after that. We are going to be using um, audio description as we introduce ourselves. There is a team of people here to talk to you this morning. Zoom captions are, uh, Zoom closed captions are enabled. And you can begin to put your questions in the Q&A function, which you'll find on the Zoom navigation menu, where you can also upvote questions that uh, you see other people enter that you would also like to have answered. So moving on, I'm going to talk to you about the aims for the session. We will explain a bit of the background to the awards and you'll hear from Faith at Ecclesiastical explain their role and the, the reason why they support these awards. We are going to be explaining um, and looking at the impacts and benefits that nominations have. We'll look at the process itself, um, both in terms of the stages and some tips to help you with that. And then we'll finish up with some sources of information that will be helpful to you as you put your nominations together in the coming weeks and months. So now we're going to look at the contents. We'll be introducing the team fairly, fairly soon. Um, we have um, Faith from Ecclesiastical to tell us about the awards. We will be uh, playing the awards finalist video from the most recent awards, which were the 2022 awards. We'll look at the impacts of nominating and the benefits of nominating. We have some examples of previous nominations. We'll look in depth at the nomination process, give you some tips, and then move on to your questions. So if I could start with introductions, that would be great. So first thing to say is that um, these awards are a collaboration. They are supported by Ecclesiastical and run by the Heritage Alliance. Um, whilst you can see some faces on your screen, that's not the entirety of the teams that support these awards. There's, uh, there's a few of us with you today. Um, we have um, Faith, who is the segment director, a customer segment director at Ecclesiastical. Faith will be um, talking to us about the Ecclesiastical role. And then on the Heritage Alliance side, there's myself, I'm Claire. I am um, a white woman in my early 50s. I have long blonde hair, a fringe, dark blue framed glasses. And today I'm wearing a pale blue jumper with a white blouse. I um, have a role in membership and events at the Alliance. We also have um, helping to support the seminar this morning, Delphine, who is the head of development and membership at the Alliance. And we are joined by Jan and Steve, who are both trustees at the Alliance. I'm very much looking forward to taking you through uh, the ins and outs of the um, awards process today. So if we could move on to the next slide. <clears throat> I'd like to introduce Faith to you, who is going to talk to you about the ecclesiastical role um, and her involvement with these awards. Thank you, Faith. Thanks, Claire. Good morning, everyone. I'm Faith Kitchen from Ecclesiastical, and I'm a white woman in her early 40s with long blonde straight hair, wearing a cream roll neck jumper today. Um, so what I'd just like to briefly talk to you about is um, why we sponsor the Ecclesiastical Heritage Heroes Award, why they're so important to us, uh, and what we really think they stand for, um, to give you our perspective. So if we can go on to the next slide, please. 
Um, so I'm hoping, and I have seen a number of cathedrals and other, and other organizations that I know we, we work with um, who have already introduced themselves in the chat. So I'm hoping that everyone does uh, know hopefully a little bit about ecclesiastical, but if you don't, um, in a nutshell, we're a very specialist insurer uh, committed to making positive impact on society. So again, this is another reason why these awards really do appeal to us. So as you know, all of our um, profits go back to uh, giving out again in good causes. Um, we ensure a breadth of different types of organisations, um, including the faith sector, charitable sector, the heritage sector, education, art and private client, and the real estate sector, so across the island, Canada and the UK. Um, and I know we have the pleasure of, of working with a number of you today. Um, so we do have a tradition of giving back. And again, you know, we are really proud of our reputation as one of the most trusted insurers in our market and the positive impact we make on society. Um, and I do think these awards are, are really, really speak to that as well. And, and we're really, really passionate about them. Um, so if we move on to why we're, we're so proud to have partnered with the Heritage Alliance for these awards, we've now been supporting these awards for over a decade. And I have the pleasure of, of also sitting on the uh, panel with uh, Jan and Steve and others um, around the, the Heritage Alliance table to make uh, what are quite often difficult decisions as well over the brilliant nominations that you put in. Um, we really believe these awards you know, do provide real true recognition as well for those doing amazing things in the sector um, and, and really benefiting the communities and ensuring the future generations as well can enjoy our heritage. And I think these walls are just a great way of recognising those in your organisations who are doing remarkable things. And so we love being part of it. So thank you very much, Claire. That was um, what I was going to share today. Thank you, Faith. So if we could move on to the next slide, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the finalist video, which we will be playing in a few moments. Um, but before we do, I just want to tell you about why it's an important element um, of the awards process. It helps us to build awareness um, of the volunteers' work and the impact that they have. Um, and that um, is spread then across the sector. So it, it's again, it's sort of raising the profile of the work that volunteers do. It also serves of a rec as a record of volunteers' contribution, as well as inspiring future nominations such as yours this year. So um, if you are able to play the um, video, Dell, that would be amazing. Thank you. For the last 13 years, the Ecclesiastical Heritage Heroes Award have celebrated the vital roles of volunteers at the heart of the heritage sector, from caring for rural heritage sites, undertaking important research, restoring structure and monitoring change, through to engaging the next generation of visitors. Heritage volunteers' skills, passion and commitment are the backbone of our sector, which is why I am so excited to share with you this year's nominees. Our Heritage Heroes Awards recognize the critical place that heritage volunteers have at the heart of our sector. Many nominations highlighted the importance of volunteers in providing outstanding visitor experience, such as Charterhouse Front Desk Volunteer, who welcomed nearly 30,000 visitors, always with a smile and a happy greeting in stunning medieval surroundings. The volunteers at the Brunel Museums shared their enthusiasm for the Thames Tunnel and Brunel's family history through accessible activities. English Heritage Chester Castle volunteer brought 974 years of stories to life and shared the joys of volunteering with their communities, recruiting 98 additional volunteers. The Kingston upon Thames Society recognized their peer David Kennedy 10 years of commitment in sharing the history of the Tudor Cum Conduit with local schools, students and researchers, in person and virtually. But heritage volunteers don't stop there. They are everywhere, front of house and behind the scene, in the archives, in the engine rooms, delving into accounts, creating inspiring content and navigating brick and mortar. At the Enbar Foundation, the Guardians of the Clock Tower supported its renovation as well as rebuilding the community pride and identity around their iconic building. 61 volunteers researchers used their own experience of Barrier to Access to research hundreds of heritage sites' websites and help Vocali produce a critical report on heritage access. 
It is great to be able to celebrate the protected REC licensee this 50th year of the protection of REC Act. A group of volunteer divers acting as site custodians to monitor, research, protect and share the stories of the shipwrecked around the UK. We are delighted to share these nominations with you. And to continue with our second award, our Heritage Storyteller Award recognized the powerful role that volunteers can play in bringing untold stories to light. The live poetry readers at Woodward House Grasmere bring William's word to life through their storytelling. A Thames Lark gathered a group of young people aged under 25 to create an immersive event along the Thames, unwrapping its hidden stories. Khaled Ali Ishmael created a podcast to document and preserve the artistic heritage of Syrian artists displaced in the UK. The Le Volunteer Digital Team at Wentworth Woodhouse created over 150 videos released on their YouTube channel, giving their estate a global presence. The volunteers of the Hallis Tree Golf Course conducted extensive research to save an overlooked municipal golf course with historical significance. The Buxton Crescent Experience volunteering team created imaginative, educational and fun experiences to celebrate Buxton's rich heritage. Finally, the Chinatown History Champion played a crucial role to reveal the neighbourhood's heritage and contribute to anti-racism work in this part of London. As you can imagine, our judging panel had the unenviable task of selecting winners among such a diverse and engaging range of nomination. We are delighted to announce this morning the finalists for this year. The winners will be announced tomorrow as part of our in-person set conference. The finalists for this year's Ecclesiastical's Heritage Heroes Awards are David Kennedy, Coombe Condrit, and the Protected Rec Licensee. The finalists for Ecclesiastical Heritage Storyteller Award are China Exchange History Champions and a Thames Lark, Thames Discovery Programme. Congratulations to all. Thank you, Delphine. Um, one of the fabulous things about that video is the voiceover. And if you know Delphine, you'll know that that's her voice, our head of development. Um, it's a really effective video because she gets, she conveys the message with heart. And I think that's one of the joyful things about being invo involved with the Heritage Heroes Awards is that it really illustrates the passion and love that volunteers bring to their the work that they do across the sector. Um, I mean, that has to be one of the main benefits of um, the awards uh, is, is, is the kind of understanding and recognition um, that the work that volunteers um, do. So I'm um, looking at some of those benefits in a little bit more detail now, focusing on the volunteers to, to start with. So we know from research we've done that when a volunteer or group of volunteers are nominated for one of these Heroes Awards, there is an immediate sense of endorsement. They feel a lot more valued and proud of their own contribution. And then there are some um, other benefits that run alongside the feeling side of things. As you saw just now, um, the finalists are featured in, in an awards video. And again, that can help organizations then to highlight their own work as a useful PR tool. And there is a prize package, which includes an award plot, two tickets to Heritage Day 2024 um, to uh, attend the award ceremony, and then PR support from both the ecclesiastical team and Heritage Alliance team. And I'll touch on that again in just a moment. But then looking at the benefits to the nominator um, and your organizations, um, again, it's, it's research that's told us this, that there is a greater recognition of the value and the benefits that working with volunteers brings. And a deeper understanding, quite often at senior levels, um, on the impacts the volunteers' work can have. The benefit of the new skills and the passion 
that volunteers bring with them. And that's often a compliment to the deliverables that are achieved in organizations as part of their core work. And, and all of those end uh, sort of equal and, and therefore you get a much greater engagement with your volunteers. And it's a self-fulfilling relationship. Um, once value and proud pride is instilled, then the contribution increases. Um, and it really is a, an ongoing, uh, a, the awards process are an ongoing thing that de deliver benefits over a long period of time, not just in the year of nomination. So I'd just like to talk about the, the PR support from Ecclesiastical and Heritage Alliance. Um, there are two different types of, of PR support. So you can see here some, um, some excerpts from the press across the wider sector that the ecclesiastical team have achieved for previous winners. Um, and then there's the support that the Heritage Alliance give. Um, you may well be aware of our newsletter, um, Heritage Update, um, which is extremely well received across the sector. And we are able to um, profile finalists and winners within Heritage Update in, in the weeks after the awards themselves. Um, and of course, then there's support through social media channels as well. And so that's not a, not to be underestimated as one of the benefits of, of being um, entered and, and going on to win. But um, I'd like now to, to move on to um, the impacts of nominations. And um, whilst I've touched on this, um, we do actually have a way of explaining this um, from in-person experience. So in just a few moments, we're going to play you another video, which is a contribution from um, one of last year's winning uh, nominations, um, Freya Aitken Turf. She is the CEO at China Exchange, and uh, she looks after the Chinatown History Champions. That's her voluntary uh, group that work within her organization. She's going to talk to you about the impact that a nomination and then winning the Heritage Heroes Storyteller Award last year had on the volunteers, her trustees, and herself as CEO. Thank you, Delphine. Hi, everyone. I'm Freya, the Chief Executive of China Exchange. We're a small charity based in London's Chinatown that creates opportunities for people to learn more about China, Chinese culture, and Chinatown where we're based and the often complicated relationship between all three. Um, I was asked to talk to you about one of the highlights of the year for us, being awarded the Storyteller of the Year Award um, and how uh, what it means really when you're a small organisation um, and your work is recognised in this way. Um, I guess I wanted to talk a little about what it meant to the volunteers. We have a group of 13 history champions. Um, I think they're incredible. I tell them all the time how incredible I think they are. They're people who trained for months with us to understand more about the multi-layered and nuanced heritage of our neighborhood. And then every month give their time to welcome visitors to Chinatown and lead them on two and a half hour walking tours of the area. Um, following the pandemic, or, or rather during the pandemic, the focus of our work shifted a little because there was a rapid increase in COVID-19 related racism that was particularly focused on people of East and Southeast Asian heritage. And so we started to understand the very clear relationship between explaining the heritage of our neighbourhood and anti-racism. Our volunteers grasped this uh, with a great deal of ease, not in terms of the content, but in terms of the sense of purpose that it gave them. We often feel very proud of the work that they do. Um, but there's a difference between me as the CEO of the charity they volunteer with saying, I think you're fantastic and receiving a, a nationally recognized award. The volunteers themselves um, they have their own WhatsApp research group for Chinatown. Uh, they are now the award-winning history champions, uh, which I love to see every time it pops up in my phone. Um, they, I see that their motivation as volunteers has increased as a result of winning the award. Um, for us as an organization, I think 
uh, it gave us a big boost. I'm not sure how you put a, a kind of measurable metric on that, but I can uh, suggest to you that if you imagine what it feels like to have a piece of your work that you care about, that you put energy and effort into, um, and that the organization works hard to support. And when you feel that that's been appreciated and recognized beyond your immediate group of supporters or volunteers or guests, then that's a very positive experience for everybody, a big energy boost. And I think uh, as a leader, there's also an impact there because this was an idea uh, that I, came up with um, maybe six years ago. Um, and sometimes your ideas are rubbish uh, and sometimes your ideas feel really good. And this is one of the ones that has always felt really good. Um, a project that has, from a personal point of view, felt really um, positive, strong, and is a way of engaging people in lots of different ways to be able to share the heritage of our neighborhood. And, again to receive that um, external recognition that this work is meaningful um, just supports that emotion uh, so if you're considering applying then the other thing i wanted to mention is that when the awards were sent to me i was extremely busy and to be very honest i didn't think i had time to apply hmm. Um, it was actually another volunteer who sent the link to me and I wrote back and said, thank you very much for sharing this. And he rang me, or maybe he, maybe it was a WhatsApp conversation. And he said, Freya, I think you really need to make time for this because I'm really proud to volunteer with an organization that has a group of other volunteers who are doing this work. And I would like to be able to show them that I admire and support them. And so I would like you to nominate them. Wow. So make the time. Uh, it means a lot to other people, not just to you, not just to your organization. It can mean a great deal to your volunteers. Um, and you know, from a practical point of view, it wasn't as onerous as I imagined to complete the form. And once I got started telling everybody how amazing I think those volunteers are, and providing the data for how amazing those volunteers are, the nomination wrote itself. So make a cup of tea, read the form, fill it in, make a difference to your volunteers. Good luck. And I think Freya um, explains really well the benefits um, and the impact that nominations can have. Um, Faith mentioned earlier just how long the awards have been running over a decade. In fact, this is the 14th year, consecutive year of awards. Um, and the next two slides just show us um, some, some names that are intended to illustrate the, the different parts of the sector that nominations come from. On this slide, you can see that there are entries that are about digital um, contributions. You can see that there are um, visitor engagement contributions being made there, as well as <clears throat> construction. So, excuse me. <clears throat> What's the emotion in the last few, few, uh, few videos that's getting to me? But you can also see that there's a sort of physical um, contribution being made in these awards as well. It really does illustrate the huge range of skills that volunteers bring with them. And if we can take the second slide, that's great. Um, on the left there, you can see that it's a passion for literature that's brought volunteers um, to support the Wordsworth Grassmere organisation. And again, you've got some front of house on the on the far right there at the Charter House. Um, intended really to show you that every nomination is worth considering. Everything that your volunteers do is really worth celebrating. And um, these awards highlight that unique contribution that your volunteers bring with them. <clears throat> so if we could move on now to the nomination process. Um, there are three main elements to the process itself. And the first is about award eligibility. And uh, we'll be coming back to that in more de detail in just a moment. Um, that's about identifying the correct award category for your nomination. But then moving on to the form itself, um, there are three sections. It's really not an onerous process. Uh, the first of those sections is core, core content, 
Um, and it's about telling us specifically what your nominee has contributed or achieved and how they may have progressed the project that they've been working on and what the impact has been made. And this is where you would include any me measurable results of their work. Section two is optional. And that's because we're aware that it's not always possible to provide this kind of evidence. Perhaps the project is quite new, or perhaps it doesn't generate the kind of content that this section might ask for. And so your nomination won't be uh, downweighted if you don't use this section. Um, however, if you do have some evidence of impact, this is the place to put that information. And that can become in many different forms. It can be third party endorsements, quotes or anecdotes. It can be copy of news coverage. It can be social media posts. There's a whole range of different types of content that you can include in that second section. <clears throat> the third section is photographs um, and they serve a couple of purposes. You saw how the finalist video was created using still images um, and they are important for PR purposes. The other aspect for them is, is for the judges themselves. It's about how they illustrate what the nomination is about. You heard that saying that a picture um, says a thousand words. There's nothing like seeing a photograph of volunteers carrying out the work that they do or seeing, seeing the impact of that in progress that a photograph can can contribute. So they are an important and essential part of the nomination. And the third third element is, is the timeline. Um, as we stand uh, here today, we have um, several weeks, many weeks ahead of us. Um, the deadline for completed and submitted nominations is before noon on Monday, the 8th of January. And the last element of time is to make sure that you and your nominee save the date for the award ceremony, which is 7th of March, 2024. Thank you. So if we could move on to um, the, cri the uh, criteria, that would be great. So I'm actually gonna hand over to Jan at this, uh, this point, who's going to talk to you about award eligibility and the two different award categories. Thank you, Jan. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jan Wills. Um, I'm an archaeologist and um, a Heritage Alliance trustee. And um, I'm a, a white woman in her 60s, uh, brown hair, brown jumper, uh, glasses, a stripy scarf, and I'm sitting in front of a very crowded archaeological bookshelf. So I had the, very, the great pleasure of being part of the judging panel last year for the 2022 awards and the videos this morning just remind me of the fantastic range of heritage projects and heritage volunteers who um, came forward and made applications. Uh, fantastic range and uh, I'm really looking forward to see uh, the applicants in 2023. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit um, over two slides about the two categories of awards this year. First of all, um, heritage collaboration. The emphasis he here on for this award is on collaboration. It is an award for volunteers who are collaborating with another group uh, to deliver their heritage work or their heritage project. So um, in this case, the nominator, that is the person who's going to make the application, can be uh, a founder, a, a staff member, a volunteer, or um, a, a friend at any UK heritage organisation. That, of course, includes the Heritage Alliance and its members, but it isn't limited. So it's a very broad range of nominators who can come forward. They can nominate a volunteer or a group of volunteers involved with heritage again in any UK heritage organisation. And what we want to know in the applicants for this award is about their collaboration. They can have collaborated um, with a different organisation, um, with um, volunteers or with groups of volunteers. But again, the emphasis is on collaboration. 
how did your nominee or a volunteer or group of volunteers work with another group to deliver a great project, a great experience? And lastly, on this slide, the when. The project or the work for which you're making a nomination should have taken place during 2023. We're very conscious that a lot of heritage work is never ending. Projects can have a lifetime of many years, but what we really want you to put forward is what you did in 2023. So the segment of the work uh, or the project that took place during that particular year. So that is our Heritage Collaboration Award. And we'll now move on to look at Heritage Heroes, which is, I think, really a, a very, very broad category of um, award. And again, if you think back to the videos that we've seen this morning, you'll remember that diversity. Now, there's a, a small difference, but an important one for this award. So in terms of, first of all, the nominator, that is the person making the application, um, that person must be um, part of the Heritage Alliance in some way. So staff, volunteer, friend at an organisation that is a member of the Heritage Alliance or a member of one of the Heritage Alliance's members. So um, taking an organisation which I'm um, a part of, which is a member of the Heritage Alliance, an archaeological company, they're a member, so they could nominate, um, as well as someone who is actually um, a Heritage Alliance member. However, organisations that are not within the Heritage Alliance member network can't nominate for a Heritage Heroes Award. So there is that difference between the two awards. The nominees in this case will be a volunteer or a group of volunteers again who are involved with a heritage project and they can be anywhere in the UK or undertaking any kind of heritage activity. So they don't have to be a member of the Heritage Alliance. Um, again, the project itself, the heritage project can be anywhere, any type of heritage organisation or project within the UK and it can be outside the Heritage Alliance. The timeline for this Heritage Heroes Award is the same as Heritage Collaboration. So it's a work carried out during 2023. Again, we recognise that projects may have a longer um, lifespan, but focus on what happened um, during 2023 when you're um, preparing your application. So I hope that doesn't feel too complicated. We can pick up any questions or any areas where I've been unclear in the questions. We want this to be um, a straightforward process um, for your great heritage projects. So thanks, and I'll, I'll hand back over to Claire. Thank you, Jan, that was really helpful. Um, and just one additional point on there, um, which is about members of members of the Heritage Alliance. So this one does confuse people. Um, in the final side of this deck, which, you will be which will be shared with you once we've finished, there is a link to the Alliance current membership list, which means that you can check to see if an organization that you are associated with and whether or not they are actually an Alliance member, just to help um, clear up that eligibility question. So um, once you have decided which of the awards uh, you are going to be entering, you then need to move on to the form itself. And to take us through um, some, some tips in this space, we have Steve, a uh, trustee at the Heritage Alliance. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Claire. Good morning. My name is Steve Oates. I'm Chief Executive of the uh, Heritage Railway Association. And just before I describe myself, on that point, the HRA itself has some 300 members. So it is at the HRA, which is the Heritage Alliance member, but any one of my 300 members could be applying for one of these awards. So again, gives it extra clarification. Uh, well, once again, good morning. <clears throat> um, I am a white male um, of a certain age, just getting a little bit past 60, unfortunately. Uh, and today I'm wearing a blue jumper. I have blue dark framed glasses 
and um, I'm a bit uh, unshaven actually. I should have had a had a shave this morning. Um, <clears throat> the uh, background uh, being Heritage Railway Association is a picture of Flying Scotsman. Now, top tips for nominations. Um, these are actually really important um, because it could be tempting just to write and write and write and go, oh, I need to say this. Ah, oh, I must get that in. Uh, oh, I must add this. Actually, um, you need to really think about how you're getting your message across in the nomination form. And first and foremost, you need to be immediately clear who you're nominating and why. It's almost like the executive summary. You know, it's the it's the top line, the, 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 the who and the why. Be specific. Who are you nominating and why? Just get it out there straight away so it can immediately be seen. Uh, and be clear. Be brief. Be ordered. Um, I personally love seeing bullet points. It just makes it so much easier to read. And it also, I think, helps to focus the mind of the person making the nomination to think, well, I could waffle on for three sentences here. I could encapsulate it in a couple of sharp bullets. So try and be as clear and specific. Keep it brief, well written. Make it easy to read. Uh, and as I say, if possible, break it up and uh, and use bullet points. Um, really importantly, and for somebody who has judged uh, awards uh, in a number of um, areas, um, outside of heritage as well, um, the number of people who assume Oh, of course, the judges will know what I'm talking about. No, the judges don't, actually. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm in heritage, but I'm actually in mobile heritage. I'm in rail heritage. If I'm looking at something for, to do with built heritage, um, churches, cathedrals, I, I see a number of people um, uh, on the call today uh, from, from that area. Why assume I would know that much? So don't assume we know anything about the nominee. Um, we can only judge using the information included so so again it comes back to make it uh, make it absolutely clear uh, moving on evidence see if you can provide some clear evidence of how the nominee meets the award criteria read reread and reread again the award criteria there's not a lot of it but check it again and um, provide some evidence state measurable results if that's possible not always possible but what are the measurable results that you're actually looking at? What's been achieved? What are the outcomes? Not just the outputs, but what are the outcomes and the impacts that have been achieved? Um, and uh, when Claire was uh, going through uh, the process earlier on, she did say that examples, um, it, it might be optional, but if you can provide some tangible examples of excellence and achievement, illustrate how the nominees have made that positive impact, demonstrate why they lead their field and perhaps link to news articles, case studies, videos, social media posts or testimonials. Uh, not too much because I've got to read all this, um, but, you know, some useful links and go, actually, here's something, a link to this, which actually gives a really great example just to back up my point. And if we can move on to the next slide, here we are. Um, again, highlight with evidence attributes such as outstanding commitment, advocacy, professionalism, being a role model, uh, innovation and contribution uh, to overall success. Um, sometimes when somebody is writing a nomination, as I say, if, you, if you're not really focusing, it can get a bit wishy-washy, um, even vague. You don't necessarily mean to, but it comes across like that. Um, and it's easy to use a sort of old hackneyed phrase, oh, oh, such and such, oh, he's great, she's brilliant. Um, but make sure you explain why. Don't just say they're great. Tell us why. Let your passion and admiration for the nominee shine through. So don't be wishy-washy. Get some passion into it and explain why somebody is brilliant or excellent. Um, time. <laughs> Although Claire said there's several weeks to go. Um, Christmas is in between. Um, it is the 8th of January. That's actually not very far away. Uh, and you would have seen on the video as well um the speaker saying well at first i wasn't going to do it and actually it did take a bit of time but look it's well worth it so don't underestimate how much time you'll need to do this well winning nomination entries uh, could take a few hours but actually it's worth it think back to that video and think how beneficial 
uh, it is to the organization and uh, to the to the nominees. So give yourself time. Do not leave it till the morning of the 8th of January or even the Saturday or Sunday before. Um, you know, start thinking about it now. Start jotting things down and help it come together, whatever style you use. But make sure you give sufficient time. Um, we should say be doing this about every document, every email, everything we ever write uh, and send. Um, often it's not the case, is it? How many things do we receive where you go, oops, spelling mistake? Oh, what does this sentence actually mean? Spell check it, proofread it, review, get somebody else to read it. Does it make sense? Remember, the judges have got to have got to read all of this. It's got to make sense. Don't let your, your um, entry down by you know, silly mistakes, because actually it comes across as slightly uncaring. If it's full of grammaticals and spelling mistakes, you go, well, do they really care? Do they Are they trying to get this across in the best possible light? <clears throat> um, and finally, um, and I saw one of the questions, or probably the first question come from the Q&A just now, how many entries are we expecting? Well, actually, we don't know. But um, whether there's 10 or 100 or somewhere in between, remember, the judges have to read your and all of the many nominations so please make it easy for the judges because there's a lot of stuff to read and if it's wishy-washy waffle long then that just makes it a bit more tricky make it easy and make your entry shine in whatever way you think you need you need to do that Thank you, Steve. That last point spoken with passion. That's an appeal from, from direct from the heart, that one. Uh, thank you for those top tips. Um, questions and answers. So um, we have um, a couple of questions that have come in so far, um, which I will go through in just a moment. Um, it could be a sign of how thorough we've been this morning that, uh, that at the moment there were relatively few questions. But now is your opportunity. You have... Um, a panel who are actually working on these awards in front of you. So do make use of this time. Um, it doesn't matter if you think it's a daft question. Um, somebody, as well as yourself, will find that useful. And we can also start to build our frequently asked questions from the content that you generate for us this morning. I will, whilst we have answered these questions in text um, already, I will um, read them out loud because um, the group um, is helpful for the group to hear them. Uh, the first is, it, um, how many entries do we expect each year? Now, Steve, I know you just touched on this. Um, the and, and you also touched on the fact that it varies greatly, and we don't know. Um, so we have to be prepared for as many as 75 to 100 or as, as few as 70. Um, there are all sorts of things that impact on the number of nominations that, that come in. Um, COVID would have had a huge impact, obviously. Um, and uh, anything else that might be going on in the sector impacts as well. So we just need to be prepared for, a, for great diversity on that particular one. Um, the next question, um, Jan, I might ask you to come in on this. this. It's, can heritage collaboration involve a range of volunteer organisations? Yes. Um... I, I think um, I'm trying trying to um, think exactly uh, what we're talking about here. I think that um, what you you've said already is quite helpful, which is that yes, but you need to be clear about um, exactly who you're talking about and what their role and contribution has been. Um, I wonder whether you were thinking about. Um, people collaborating with uh, different parts of the same organization or different and entirely separate organizations. I think both are eligible uh, as long as, again, you're really specific about who you're talking about and what the, the partners have done and how they've worked together. Thank you, Jan. I don't know if that fully answers the question, but I'm happy to um, obviously to you know to to expand further if uh, if Katie feels that um, that's still not entirely clear. I, I think you expanded on on what I was able to contribute at the time, so uh, I would I would say we covered that one quite well. Thank you. Um, so we've got some new ones coming. There's some easy ones here. Will the slides be shared? Yes, they will. Um, and uh, we have 
in my organ if my organization is not a member of the heritage alliance today but we join tomorrow can we still nominate someone for a heritage heroes awards yes you can because your membership um, begins the, the day that you are enrolled which means that you would be eligible provided you join with enough time to allow yourself to get the nomination in before the 8th of january the answer is yes and we would welcome you in our membership thank you Um, I think it's sort of another admin one here. Will a theatre that's supported by Theatres Trust and a part of the Heritage Trust Network be able to make a nomination? Um, so I assume you are talking about the Heritage Heroes um, Awards there. Um, and yes, in fact, you've sort of a double um, eligibility there because you are associated with two Heritage Alliance members. Um, and from Katie, I am working with a volunteer trust that leads or coordinates mm -hmm. five other voluntary groups. I'm um, not quite sure I understand what that question is asking. If you're able to expand on that a little bit, that would be really helpful. And um, whilst we wait for that to come through, um, Faith, Jan, Steve, is there anything else that you think uh, that would be useful to contribute whilst we're all together and that might be of value to to our audience today? Yeah, I think the um, uh, I think Katie's was in regard to her earlier question. She asked the question about can a heritage collaboration involve a range of volunteer organisations. So I think it was she was providing that. That's the way I read it anyway. It was yes. actually she's providing the information she's working with the trust that leads and coordinates five other groups. That's right. Yeah. 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 I'm glad we've got more than my brain here today. Thank you, Faith. Um, so same question then, just whilst we are all together, is there anything in particular, anything else that you feel might be useful to our audience today? We've worked our way through the questions so far. Perhaps I could just um, add, Claire, um, I, I think they're really expanding on Steve's points, but just based on my experience of judging last year's award, we had some fantastic entries, but it wasn't always clear in the entries precisely what was being nominated or who was being nominated. So a volunteer group doing really wonderful things, but, but what is it you actually want us to look at in terms of their achievements? So I would say, be really specific, don't hold back. Um, tell us, you know, who did what, to what sort of heritage, with whom, and that will really help us and it will um, encourage the chance of you being successful. Another thing, if you have photos, send us photos, but please tell us what's in them. Because again, we had lots of photos and we wondered, um, was this the nominee? Um, what exactly were the volunteers doing at that point? And it really helps the judges if you can say, here's a lovely photo of person X carrying out this piece of work and we're nominating them for this project uh, for a Heritage Heroes Award or whatever. So be precise and um, that would be great. I think for me, uh, probably two points is that um, I, I, firstly, I love being on the judging panel. I love seeing all of the nominations come through. So if in doubt, nominate, um, because we would rather have, even though, you know, it is, it is it, it does take time but it is so worthwhile seeing what is happening out there uh and also um a plea for the passion i think i think that for me is one of the, one of the top tips it's so great when you can really it almost jumps off the page at you and you can really feel um just how passionate and how much that volunteer or that group has done uh, and the benefit they've given um to others as well and that's so lovely to see so yeah that, that's my two points thanks um, yeah, I, I think I'll add to add to both of those. I mean, uh, probably repeating some a lot of a lot of what has been said. Uh, just to touch on on Jan's point. Sorry, with the, I, whilst I referred to evidence, I didn't specifically talk about photographs. Well, I'm actually thinking of another set of awards that I'm involved in actually right now. A lot of photos come in, and sometimes you're absolutely right, Jan. You look at them and you go, "Well, that's a very lovely picture, but I wonder who, or I wonder what it is." And you think it's so simple and so you end up discounting it and think well does that where does that where does that fit so just make it again make it clear be concise uh, make it clear um and just again to reiterate the point on why you would enter um i mean i'm a firm believer um in awards 
and your ability to shout about your success afterwards, you know, whether you're nominated or you win, that ability to shout about and be proud of your organization, the individual or individuals concerned, um, it is so strong. Um, and I, I, I sometimes wonder why people don't uh, enter awards. Perhaps it is it is just a time thing. But think back to that video and last year's winner and that sense of achievement, sense of pride of what it did for everybody and what it did for that organization. Uh, and actually, if you just take that organization, guess what? I had never, ever heard of it before. I now know about it. So that in itself, it's just it just builds and builds and builds. So it's a it's a, it's a really powerful thing to do to to put in some cracking entries. I agree. Um, I think the, the barriers of time and perhaps a concern that you won't be recognised might um, be a reason why you wouldn't nominate. But if you could find a way to dissolve those barriers, we know that the process in itself is is a tremendously valuable and, and a great validation for, um, process. So um, I hope that we have inspired you uh, to nominate your volunteers. Um, I'm going to move on to the next slide, which talks about where you can get information from going forward. Um, we have um, an information pack on Google Drive. Um, which you can find at the, the first link on this list. list. Um, that includes information about the awards, the kind of thing that um, Faith was talking about earlier, both nomination forms for the two different categories. And I will be adding some um, details about the kind of press coverage that Ecclesiastical achieve for the winners. So that awards pack is going to be added to by today's content, including this slide pack. And within a week or so, the recording of this webinar as well, so that you can refer back to this. You'll also find um, the details of where you can look at the finalist video again. <clears throat> and the last but not least, where to send your nomination. It will land with me if you send it to heritageheroes at theheritagealliance.org.uk. And just to remind you, my name is Claire. So I'm going to leave that there for a few moments, um, but that does conclude the um, webinar this morning. We haven't had any more questions in, um, and uh, so I think we have uh, we have resolved anything that's come up today. So that just re remains for me to say thank you very much for the teams um, for their um, attendance today. Thank you for coming. Um, and uh, thank you for the support from um, both the Heritage Alliance and the ecclesiastical teams that are working on this behind the scenes. Thank you very much. <laughs>